Okay, Raquel joins Southwest <clears throat> Detroit Environmental Vision in 2019. Raquel works on community outreach and engagement projects that connect residents and neighbors with uh, projects and other partner organizations. Raquel serves on DTE's Community Advisory Committee, Detroit City Council Immigration Task Force, Detroit Hispanic Development Corporation, Michigan Food and Farming Systems, and the Michigan Environmental Council Board. Uh, she is an Environmental Leadership Program 2020 Fellow. She's passionate about leadership development in youth in Southwest Detroit, works on policies and ordinances that work for residents and works to connect residents to South Detroit. Previously, she was the Director of Housing and Special Projects, an immigrant rights organizer and electoral campaign organizer and spent 15 years in higher education in Detroit. And without further ado, Raquel, you're on. Well, thank you for having me. I'm going to share my screen. Um, so I would say be patient with me. <laughs> um, let's see. I'm going to present. Great. So let me know if you can see my my presentation. Okay. Mm -hmm. So thank you for having me on um, this Cinco de Mayo day, which is a very famous um, Mexican holiday. Um, party, you know, people, so I just picked up my son and there's traffic. <laughs> I couldn't move and I thought I was late. So thank you for having me. We're always really excited to talk about Southwest Detroit, um, the, the topics, the issues that we're facing. Uh, we always want to make an invitation for folks to join us. Um, even if you're not from Southwest, these policies affect you. And so in a little bit, I'm going to ask you for your zip codes just to see where we are across, um, across, you know, the the, the, the map, um, and we'll talk about that a little bit. So um, I would love to start with a land acknowledgement. Um, I would like to acknowledge that the land that Detroit and Southeast Michigan is, hope I don't chop it up, um, Anishinaabe Becky, Anishinaabe Becky, I can't, Mississauga, Peoria, um, Fox, Miami, Potawatomi, ancestral land. We acknowledge the land to honor its people, show respect, acknowledge our history of conquest um, and resist erasing the First Nations. And I thank them for allowing us to be here, to allow us to be here together today. And we should never forget that this is not our land, right? So we always start with the land acknowledgement. <clears throat> so I know that um, you just read my bio, and uh, but I want to tell you how I really got here, right? This is just like points on a resume. And I want to tell you what inspired me to do um, outreach work and how it, it ended up um, affecting environmental work at SDEV, Southwest Detroit Environmental Vision. I was a Dean of Students for 15 years, as you said, and um, I had a moment of inspiration. Um, I was talking to a student one day and he was kind of misbehaving. And I said, what would your grandfather say to you? right now if he could talk to you and he looked at me and he, he, he said wow you know he came from georgia and he traveled to for a job and he worked really hard and i'm misbehaving i'm not doing well in my classes and so it was like connecting to the past and and um one day i was sitting there like really just distraught like tired and not connecting to my community here in in southwest detroit and that same student said to me what would your grandfather say to you if you knew you were so unhappy? And I was like, okay, I really need to think about what do I want to do and what is the impact I want to have? And so I left that job um, and quickly got myself a position canvassing, knocking on doors, and, and then every electoral season these jobs come up. And when I knocked on the doors, I fell in love with my neighbors, people I didn't know. Um, so you might see driving in, in the morning and driving out there. And, um, everybody had a different passion, a different mission, questions. Um, one lady wanted information on domestic violence. Another one thought that her house was in foreclosure but didn't know how to connect to the county auction. And, and I was thinking, how are we so disconnected from each other? And how are there so many questions? And so I just kept knocking doors. And so um, uh, that led to housing. That led to all these different, you know, quality of life issues in Southwest Detroit. Um, and then, you know, uh, it just, these issues kept cropping up. And I was a, a new mom at that time. And immediately my son had led. 
Um, and if you know Southwest, it's a beautiful area. It's got a river, it's got beautiful historic homes, and it also has Marathon. And I hate to name them because not, they're not the only ones here. You know, there's steel companies and chemical companies. They're the most prominent because they're visually on the highway. Um, but I immediately said, what have I done? Why did I come here? And if I could take that back, um, how, how would I, I mean, I, I sort of the environmental issues came crashing onto me. And um, and so I I just started being, you know, I hate to say that I wasn't, I wasn't, uh, not that I wasn't interested, I wasn't working in the environment. It wasn't on my radar. And so as a new mom um, in this neighborhood, looking at other moms that are Spanish speakers, that don't get the information from the city and, and resources for health issues, um, it, it was a big concern. And that's how I ended up uh, canvassing it around health issues and ended up with Southwest Detroit Environmental Vision. So I bet you we all have a moment um, of impact when we say, you know, we just have this realization and it's a physical reaction to something and you, uh, you make a life choice like you you you, you know you, you change what you're doing and you move in a different direction so that's how i got here um and that's why i care about southwest so much um so i want to know in the chat what do you know about southwest um just when somebody says southwest detroit in the chat if you could put one word um of of your uh impression of south and i'm gonna look at the chat really quickly i think i can do that Yes. Anyone else? It's a Mexican town. Uh, so that was a, a, a designation um, that people fought really hard to get as a, like a community, right? Um, yes, polluted. I'm really impressed because there you go, hot chocolate. There you go. Um, yeah, and I think the reason I asked that question, I think you're a, uh, a very special group because usually I get um, a lot of like uh, tourist responses, you know, like, oh, you've got murals, you have music, you have dancing. So usually it's this, um, this slide, right? Let's see if it's, um, that's what people usually, so thank you for having all these different variety of answers because usually um, we're known for our churches, we're known for our festivals, we're known for food um, and our murals. And um, we, there's a lot more that I'm going to go through with you. So we are District 6. There's a couple of ways that we identify as Southwest Detroit. District 6 is our you know, city council district. And you can see us, we're in blue. Um, and the original uh, Southwest Detroit was actually, I. I uh, was a township called Springwells, and um, it's kind of uh, Springwells and, um, you know, towards Schaefer, and it was kind of further that way, and it became incorporated, and apparently there was a lot of other tiny little towns, I guess when you were driving or going somewhere in a horse, it would take you all day to go 15 miles or 10 miles, so there was a lot of little, little areas that became incorporated, and you can see it on the original map. Um, Springwells uh, Township. And um, one of the questions that, you know, comes up is like, how did, how did Southwest develop and why are there so many Latinos here? And uh, I, I did a lot of census outreach, so I, I utilize the census a lot. And um, you can see the growth, um, you know, the growth of the population. And it's always been for work. And, and then the secondary is for family, right? And there's a, there's a couple of layers. Uh, I worked in housing and I'll just walk you through it. Um, so uh, we have a, a very sizable population here in Southwest Detroit. 
And my mom used to always say, go, when you get to a city, go to the, the Mexican store. And I was there recently, like a year ago, and this man, Spanish people walked up and said, I just got here. I'm looking for jobs. Where's the job board? My cousin lives here. I'm a bricklayer. I do, you know, different things. And um, the, the stores are normally the hubs and they're looking for work. And, and then we hear a lot of other immigration or migration internally. Um, we also have a, a huge new group of Latinos just a little bit north of us. So Southwest Detroit is, ex is expanding north um, because of the floods in um, Texas. Houston. Um, there was a couple of other places where there were like hurricanes or floods and um, there was a, a, a church here and they called and they said there's houses for twenty thousand dollars. You know this was two or three years ago before a lot of the gentrification. So people were coming because they had lost everything and it was really difficult to rebuild and it's kind of scary to rebuild in a place that's already flooded three or four times because of climate change. <laughs> Um, so they, they so they, they went from a church of 40 to about 300 people just north of us. And um, so when we did the census and we did a lot of outreach, we were explaining to people that Southwest is, is changing. Um, you know, so so that you know that uh, there's a lot of uh, secondary and, and uh, you know and, uh, migration issues, family, um, and uh, or inspiration, I should say, not issues, uh, in, uh, immigration inspirations. And, and housing is one of them, jobs is another one. I don't know how many of you know um, or are in the area, but um, we, we do have an influx of people in Southwest Detroit as well. The city is growing, and um, so there's a lot of folks buying homes and also fixing them up, and you cannot get a contract right now. You cannot. So, so all these folks that have these wonderful skills are just really employed and uh, um, you know, calling folks to come and, and work. And so, so um, District 6 specifically um, uh, is, we have, so it's, it's, it's not just Southwest Detroit, it goes all the way to um, Woodward, a little bit north, District 6. We have 106,000 uh, people, and you can see that we're just under 42,000 Latinos. Of, of those, a third are Spanish only speaking, um, Spanish speaking only which means they're a new population. Um, they're recently arrived. Um, you know, they either have student visas or work visas or they're, you know, uh, you know just recently arrived here. Um, and in, in District 6, you know, about half of us are uh, here are under the age of 18. And there's a, a wonderful site. I can send it to you a little bit later. Um, it's from Data Driven Detroit and it's how kids are doing. It's all the focus is on kids. And it even breaks it down by age. So it was a really great resource that I was looking at yesterday. Um, the median household. So a third, a third of the population speaks Spanish only. And then the median income is about 30 in 2019. So, you know, I'm going to shift into why, you know, who we are and then how and then I'm going to put together just how we all work together in, for the environmental, uh, you know, for our environmental outcomes here in South Pacific, right? So Southwest Detroit Environmental Vision, um, we started in like 1991-92, um, putting together resources with um, Southwest Detroit Business um, Association. There was dumping, there, there were, you know, there was blight, there was abandoned homes, um, there were companies that were polluting. So a lot of residents came together to say, how can we talk to, you know, companies? How can we clean up our neighborhoods? How can we get jobs? Um, and so that is how we began in 1992. Um, and, you know, so we've continued to engage, especially businesses that are coming to this area, um, you know, and, and giving them the, the you know, impressing upon them that we want to live and work in our neighborhood so that we're trying to, to get jobs here, A, to, to lower the um, environmental impact of travel for, for work, and also quality of life. If you can be home in three minutes or five minutes, um, it's it's great, right? So, uh, so that is how we got started, um, and um, so because um, Southwest Detroit is a frontline community, um, we have the third busiest port in North America. We have ten thousand trucks a day. Uh, we have an issue right now around those ten thousand trucks. The, uh, the Ambassador Bridge is pulling permits to try to expand. 
So we don't know if it's going to be 10,000, 15,000, 20,000. We don't have a plan yet. And so some of our work right now is trying to extract a plan to understand what is the environmental impact. We have a second bridge, um, the Gordy House coming up um, and will be open pretty soon. And that's another 10,000 trucks. Um, and so we also have communities around us, you know, uh, Dearborn has uh, steel mills. Um, and then, of course, everybody knows, you know, like uh, the, the the new bridges in Delray and 48217 is the um, you know, most polluted zip code in Michigan. Um, and we also have um, Marathon and, you know, just, you know, there's just a map of um, heavy impact companies between um, the bridge and you know Schaefer and, and and all the way down you know down um, you know the you know into River Rouge. So we also have um, the Port of Detroit. We have trains behind me. We have like the rail, the uh, the dift, um, and it's not just trains and it's not just pollution. It's uh, we hear clanging and crashing when they drop the you know the big cargo on the trucks. They have to lift them and drop them. And so I know it's kind of funny, but when you hear Godzilla movies and it sounds like metal twisting, that's what happens at two o'clock in the morning. Um, it disrupts sleep. Um, so we, uh, you know, industrial noise, diesel emissions, fugitive dust from a lot of the cargo that they're you know, moving around. Um, and so, you know, it, 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 the fugitive dust go, carries up and into the water, so it's also our water source. I feel like I'm going through a lot. And so, uh, Anybody can kind of raise their hand and tell me to slow down, or we can also, I don't mind answering questions now too, but, but I'm not watching the chat, so somebody should talk to me, wave at me. Um, and we, uh, it mentions the, the border uh, strike. We just saw literally right now a truck that was turned over, so the trucks could not go onto the Ambassador Bridge. They were being routed off, and they're going to come around the other way. And so we often see lines of trucks that go all the way to Schaefer and beyond on both 96, 94, and then 75 South. And so if you can imagine three or 400 trucks idling for an hour or two in our neighborhood, um, you know, we have to tell parents, you know, maybe sometimes people or young people are fidgety, they're not doing well in school. I'm like, it's like lead poisoning, it's emissions poisoning. I mean, it's it's a lot of poisoning. And so, you know, be kind and, and do some research and talk to your kids. And, you know, we encourage um, people uh, to join us in air monitoring work so that they understand what the air quality is in their neighborhood. Okay, I'm just gonna go through some samples of some of the things we've seen recently. Hold on to your hats. Okay, okay, wait, it's after this, okay. Um, so there's additional stuff. We have the waste incinerator. Um, we have the, you know, Marathon Oil, which I mentioned, um, the uh, wastewater treatment plant. Actually, I'm sorry, the incinerator is gone. Um, we have U.S. Ecology North and South, um, the, the bridge crossing. We have auto assembly plants. We have a, a logistic plant right behind me. So a couple, I don't know, 300 trucks a day going back and forth. Um, and I mentioned 48217 and, of course, Zug Island and, and uh, uh, you know, if anybody crosses the bridge, you know what's in that area. Um, you know, we also have uh, the highways, which is a, an additional source of pollution. Um, and, um, you know, added to that are possibly older pipes, um, possible lead, excess stormwater. We also see a new uh, level of flooding here in Southwest Detroit. Um, and we just list, you know, all of the things that we have here, coal, steel, power plants, chemical, automobile plants, wastewater, and freight. So we call it, you know, just a toxic soup, so, so, you know, and um, because of the proximity to the bridge, you know, companies think it's a good decision to be really close to the truck, the, the train terminal, and, you know, close to the, the bridge so that they can move their, you know, uh, handle their logistics work. and. Um, but the impact on residents is, um, you know, deadly as we saw during COVID. Um, so we also have some additional things to think about. Um, we're disproportionately affected by other 
other issues, you know, health burdens, disinvestment, economic downturns. Uh, we saw, for example, uh, unprecedented um, foreclosures and gentrification at the same time. So there's this sort of emotional burden, stress, uh, as, and toxic uh, environment, but stress, unsafe housing, um, um, the bankruptcy, we've had water shutoffs, we've had power. I mean, you can recently the DTE was in the news. Um, I know they're trying really hard. We, we talk to them a lot about residents. Um, and you can't catch everyone, but the, you know, they were recently in the news about that. And, um, um, you know, water shutoffs is also an issue. Water quality um, is an issue. And then transportation um, and a lack of green spaces. I feel like I'm going to depress everybody. So, sorry. <laughs> um, you know, access to work and transportation. I, I have a quick story, for example, when I was a dean of students in um, if everybody remembers the buses um, took two hours, they were never on time. It would take uh, like a really long time to cross the city. And we had nursing students that said, I have biology at the Western campus. And then I've got to come back and I've got a kid and people would drop out. It was so overwhelming that people would drop out of class, you know, or just, you know, they just thought it was just too much to handle, you know, and combined with the cost of a vehicle and insurance in Detroit. So just imagine all these different different combinations of things. Um, uh, we've had lending issues. Um, and then if you're another language speaker, lending, transportation, um, health news, like as I mentioned earlier, um, access to the health, you know, um, when there's like, for example, a boiled water advisory, um, that can be an issue. Not everybody's on email, not everybody's on Facebook. Um, text is a really big community, like what's up is very big in the Latino community. Um, so we're trying to get information into those systems. Um, so here's just a sampling of some of the things we've seen. This is not in Southwest, but, um, you know, we are paying attention to these kinds of things because um, because we have rail right behind us, um, right next to my son's school. When you pick them up, literally the rail is like <laughs> over um, or is carrying, you know, something, you know, gas. We, we if you remember the, the one, the, the train that like um, didn't have brakes and like exploded. It was in like Ontario, it was about 10 years ago. And it took out like a really big part of the town. And so we're always looking and trying to connect to make sure that there, you know, um, we have access to communication. Uh, we've had a couple of derailments in Southwest. Thankfully they were empty. Um, we had a fire. This is one of the events that woke me up um, because I was on Twitter. I couldn't sleep and I was looking, you know, just at the news, the one I opened and it said, explosion at marathon and i looked at my facebook and i looked at email and i thought i'm in bed a mile a mile and a half from there and it was around the same time i think that the town was leveled in texas with the um it was a uh, fertilizer and so it was alarming for me to see that this could happen and that there was no notification no text from the city and uh i remember just getting like a cold sweat and sitting up and not knowing what to do and not, you know, not knowing where to connect as a resident. Um, in 2019, we had, um, I'm sure we know, saw the news um, because it was a very complicated story. Um, a, a dock collapsed in the river. We didn't know if it had uranium and it, you know, near a water source intake, a water source for drinking water. Um, they also owed a lot of money. This is, I think, a painful spot for Detroiters. They also owned, owed like a more than a, I, I want to say like a hundred thousand dollars in water bill. But if you're a senior or a grandmother that owes a thousand dollars, you get your water shut off. And we see the disparity and privilege that businesses have. So um, you know, just and knowing that they owed money and that it was just outstanding. Um, and that they had not been reviewed and that they, that they had not had a visit and that uh, they were out of compliance. It's just a really painful, um, you know, piece of information for us. Yes, I have dogs. Okay. Um, so this is where, this is the site of the collapse. We had another one last year. Um, 
I think it was in November of 2021. So two in the same school. And um, so uh, Chemical Blaze in um, uh, Southwest Detroit. And that's in, 20, in August of 2021. Um, numerous permit pulls from different sources trying to um, have open pits, you know, um, a different a variety. There's, it's not just one company. There's about two or three of just open pits. We also helped stop a concrete crusher um, down by Patton Park. And we know that concrete, you know, is uh, worse than asbestos. It's got silica in it and more smaller and more penetrates more into the, into the surfaces of the lungs. Um, so, yes. And so we have, you know, I can sit here and grab headlines and it's just a part of, it's just a little bit of what we see. And, um, you know, part of our work, and I think it's part of my bio, it's like leadership development. And I, I know those are just kind of keywords, right? But um, every summer we get, you know, um, 15 young people from the city of Detroit with partners like United Neighborhood Initiatives. They, they, they get the big package of students and then they place them. And we, we, this year we're going to have DNR students. We want to impress upon them this work. We want to connect them and invite them to every meeting that we go to. We invite them to city council meetings and you know we we connect them to our, our um our, hopefully our new council woman we uh the our last council woman our, our, our interns would go to all the meetings and would join and listen to show them that you have access to elected officials to show them how you can shape policy show them how you can write letters um and do the research and you know join groups and you know uh, we want them to watch these kinds of things and um, you know be involved and teach them the ropes of how to be involved and hopefully we'll run for office and hopefully you know um, we'll help somebody become elected or you know we'll be a very active resident or citizen you know just uh, whatever you know in whatever capacity try to connect them to all of these different things and that's the leadership piece that uh, we are um, always interested in who is in your pipeline, you know, who are you talking to, who are you sharing your skills with, who are you showing the ropes on, on how this works. And we have had some successes. And so um, last year in March, we helped rezone this whole corridor from 75 up until I, I believe junction, which was like it was designated uh, heavy industry. Um, and we said no, no more heavy industry. It cannot be intertwined in our neighborhoods with our residents. Um, some folks got grandfathered in, but now it's light industrial, you know, mixed, um, you know, residential. And um, the interns did a lot of the research and the interns did a lot of the outreach and 400 people showed up to the meeting. They did a lot of the social media. They agitated a lot of people and it unanimously passed to downgrade the zoning. And so that, you know, that is an exciting um uh, win for young people. And so I, you know, and they were really excited. They were like, what's next? You know, they were just so ready. And so um, every year we get a new batch and we're just hoping to, to, uh, what is the word that get them, get them excited about um, policy. So here's some of the outcomes um, related to our toxic soup. Um, right. So, um, you know, well, some additional information, right? We pay twice as much um, uh, in, with our income for energy. Um, you know, we have a higher prevalence of asthma. I think I have another slide. 65,000, Detroiters lose approximately 65,000 days of work to polluted related illnesses each year. Um, 500,000 school absences annually, um, increased rates of, uh, rates of asthma, um, 70, sorry, that's a repetition, lost work days, um, elevated blood levels in children, um, oops, um, with lead. And it's not just contact lead, um, it's also from the demolitions that were happening, uh, that we were, the city of Detroit was demolishing. And if you're not doing it the right way, wetting down the debris, um, all of that became, you know, fugitive dust. Um, and so here's some additional, and you'll find that it's also racialized. You'll see that, you know, 
that black residents um, suffer from some of these rates at higher rates than the white residents. And so we know that, um, that you know, a lot of these factors are you know, in combination um, just affect um, certain Detroiters in different ways. And so, um, so right, asthma, 50% higher than, uh, than, that, than uh, Michigan as a whole, hospitalization three times higher um, than that of Michigan as a whole, um, uh, hospitalizations of children 50% higher than Detroit adults, um, black persons are two times higher than, than, white, than white persons. Um, you know, so we see, you know, that this is a real impact. Um, what's hard about air quality is that it's, you know, it's not a visual thing, you know, so people don't, you know, it's, it's, it's a, uh, it's hard to see, it's not like dumping, it's not like, um, you know, an oil spill, it's, it's, it's invisible. And so uh, part of our work is showing this to, to people in Southwest, showing this to, um, uh, decision makers and, and uh, we're gratefully working with lots of researchers like um, folks at U of M and folks, folks at Wayne State. So sometimes they'll produce all of the research that, you know. Um, oh, I see a hand raised. Go ahead. Jane. So um, I'm just wondering as you talk about the young people um, and you, I, I've, you'll have to re remind me where they came from, but are they, when they come to you, do they know about environmental issues or have they come from a place where they've learned that when they get to you or how informed are they? You know, I can't really answer that question, but I think that this year would be a really good way to get a pre and a post. We do find that some are just connected and um, aware and then some are not. You know, we have been one, you know, wanting to create like a sunrise chapter uh, thing is, we don't have them all year round, right? I think it's a, a school is better suited, but um, uh, there is also a group called ERA, um, and I can send you the link. It'd be wonderful to get them to come. They are um, a Salina school at the De Detroit Dearborn border, which is, you know, they have the same issues. They're like right down the street from us. They have a wonderful camp um, where they bring in students. Um, and really also do like a really great curriculum. So it'd be really great to connect them to, you know, have them come or um, invite them. But um, we have found that some are very, very aware and then, you know, some are learning. So, but I, I'd love to get a pre and a post. And um, so Dolores Perales, who is our team member, uh, most works with them most directly. And so that's a really great, just gave me an idea, Jane. <laughs> so, no. yes. I so I have a question and then I have a comment. Yes. And, and my question is, out of the um, summer interns, how many come from Crystal Ray, typically? It really varies if they sign up, sign up with um, Road Detroit's Young Talent. It, I mean, it could be five or it could be, they could, we often get students also from other parts of the city. So they could come yeah. from the east side. They could come from, we try to get them from Southwest Detroit so that transportation is not an issue. Yeah. But, so, you know. Um, so if they, if they come from Crystal Ray, uh, a good number of the Crystal Ray high school students come from Holy Redeemer grade school. And just observation from last week during Earth Day, SDV had a session at Holy Redeemer uh, teaching the kids about environmental issues. Uh, um, yeah, so I, I mean, so I, I believe that some of the students come to your summer intern program educated by you when they were in elementary school yes is my point okay well one of our interns one of our interns said that she was she had gotten a presentation called what is the life of a tire and she was an intern and then she became a staff member and she said i've known about you since i was you know fifth grade or fourth grade and you know that is to me something that you know yeah so, so it's a plot. I, I say, I often say that we're plotting, you know, like, so, um, thank you for that. So I think, wait, 
Um, I included my raccoon because I do some raccoon re rehabbing. Um, let me just verify that this is my last slide. Ah, it is not. I don't know why it skipped. Okay. So what can you do? This is where I make my big ask. Um, and I want to watch the time. Um, so harm reduction, you know, we're all involved. Sierra Club, I'm preaching to the choir. I'm not often preaching to the choir. Um, you know, become partners to groups on the ground. Business has a lot of sway. So wherever you work, if you're not, if, you know, um, uh, employees have a lot of input, you know, and, and uh, you know, bringing companies to volunteer, recruiting them to be to come into the solutions and sustainability, um, develop long-term relationships with us, um, you know, with residents. And so there are some issues that are super localized here at Detroit City Council. Um, some of them are state, right? Some of them are there, you know, state level, some of them are county level. So we ask you to join us, you know, join our mailing list. Um, you know, fill out our stuff, you know, get on our mailing list, email us, you know, like become, you know, just, uh, you know, or, you know, partner, we could partner with Sierra Club and say, we write letters for everybody. We sign every letter. We, we go to every meeting. We, you know, we, we assign people to go. We do a lot of outreach and get lots of people to come to meetings, other organizations. Um, you know, uh, for those of you that are not involved in your local ordinances and policies, you've got, you've got to do it. Like, it, and, for everyone, the source is different. You know, um, we like to post a lot. You know, um, Sierra Club is very active. You know, I could share it, and then you can reshare it. Um, we say care about one policy and see it through to the end. If it's just one, just follow one and call your city council person, call call your county commissioner, ask about it, ask about it, ask about it, and don't think you. Um, uh, it's usually a negative thing, but I'm going to say it in a positive way: pit bull it, like grab it and pit bull it. Um, don't let it go. Um, if you are at a company, influence your suppliers and vendors. Um, if we can connect with your your business, um, we'd love to, to know what you're working on. If you have got innovative solutions, we want to know about it. We want to share, elevate, tell stories about it. Um, support our work if you can. Become an, uh, an industry member or just a member. Um, and uh, yeah, we'd love to join your meetings if you are aware um, there's a couple, I apologize for my dogs. Uh, if you are aware of meetings that we should come to and vice versa, I think, uh, uh, for example, I just learned about the Port Huron Trail all the way down. It's gonna go all the way down. Um, and we were, we were involved in that, all the way past like River Rouge. We're also working um, on the Michigan water table. Um, you know, we're going to be learning a lot about what policies at the state level, you know, will help um, keep the water clean and, you know, what, what can we do? And I'd love to share that and invite anyone that wants to join can come to these meetings and share back in which Sierra Club, um, could, could do that. And, um, yeah, so I think, um, get to know your, get to know your electeds and, um, and support, you know, to support those policies and, and procedures, um, you know, get to know them and ask them questions. Um, so, um, that's my raccoon name, Ray B. And um, I don't know if anyone has any questions. If there's something I cannot answer, I can well, you know, get it to my yes, team. Uh, Raquel, I have a question, and it is, how does the, you said the median income is um, $30,000. Yes. And how does, that, how does that affect people's ability to, um, to, um, help with uh with your what you do so it's all over the spectrum right we do have gentrification so we also have you know i think that um um i need to look at my source again i i used a couple of different sources but um, we do find that the average family um is is very busy the average latina family is very busy has kids different grades um you know uh team uh, tag teaming to keep you know to, to keep the household in order and, and lots of family obligations and so um we you know we, we that's why i think we sometimes rely on industry membership to help support some of the work um and um we do find that people are still in need in southwest there's still you know there is this very large mutual aid society in southwest so there's a lot of sharing of resources 
but sometimes it's too much. Like I just had a man call me, I can't pay my bill, my electric bill. And I connected him to Bridging Communities, which is a really great partner on McGraw who connects to DTE and they shape you work. Um, you know, they, they, they do intake for their, their programs. So, you know, we do find that, um, you know, residents are also, if you think about the Latino population, if they're recently arrived um, and they come from countries where um, they were not in relationship with their government and they did not have a, a positive relationship with their elected officials, they're not gonna join us. You know, they're not gonna join our, our policy teams. And um, so, so we're constantly looking for people to write a letter or to, you know, to give us a quote or to, you know, to do some press or, um, you know, but we do have, we do, we do have areas where, um, where we struggle with that. We had, we had a, a large chunk of the population that didn't get vaccinated. You know, they just didn't, they just didn't trust the system. You know, so we, we were struggling with that here. Would, would you show your prior slide of what you can do so I can take a screenshot of it? Sure. Let me see if I can. There we go. Um, Raquel, I have a question that you mentioned that uh, businesses want to be close to the train terminal. Is, is that, um, Michelle, are you? decisions about you into uh into office yeah it was fun writing it doing all that work about it with all those candidates and you know i could i could add that to this slide if, when it's uh, when it's time to vote people in you know and they have these virtual coffees and they you know just go and ask questions what are you going to do about flooding? Like, wh what is your stance? One of the things we think would be really helpful, um, there's one city that did, the, well, I, there may be more. I, I know of one city. Um, and it's called, here in Michigan, um, it's a climate change declaration. And I feel like it was White Lake on the west side of Michigan. And they went out and, um, you know, uh, what is the word? They went out and uh, talked to their city council candidates, and they they produced a declaration um, stating that you know it's a climate change um, you know de the declaration of you know it's an urgent urgent um, declaration, and, and it allowed them to um, change some of their vendors, um, buy some electric vehicles. Like they said, everything we do with our money, you know, we need to divest of. Um, places and people and, you know, vendors that are not, you know, um, moving in a sustainable direction. That is something that's coming up in conversation here in the city of Detroit um, with the Green Task Force. It comes out of um, one of our city council members, Scott Benson. Um, and we're just kind of like having this conversation. Um, and we've been meeting with different city council persons to, to talk to them about this. And, you know, it's time for for everyone to take it very seriously and to say we should declare it might change the way they um, spend money um, or they might say yes to some projects or no to some projects and so wherever so i'm just curious in in um in the chat if everybody could put their city in zip code just out of curiosity to see who is here um and maybe an issue or a topic of policy that you're working on or that you're aware of um, i'd love to see that just to see who's who's in the room and, um, you know, um, for, so where is Jane, where is 48301? Oops, I'm sharing my screen and I'm recognizing. Yes. Bloomfield Hills. Okay, and are there any, any, uh, any issues or policies that um, you're, you're thinking, um, is anybody working on any policies? Well, I'm working with a group trying to um, get Oakland County to put some policies in to um, 
you know, address emissions and environmental justice in the Pontiac area. I don't think we have anything like you have in Southwest Detroit. Find out if you know. I can find out if there's. Any, um, we're also interested in finding out, um, you know, who has seen excessive truck traffic. Um, so unfortunately, I think it's all in Detroit, but I, you know, I'm really curious. Um, that's fantastic, Sherry. <laughs> that's great. Um, um, we'll, we'll be in, in contact. When I travel to Georgia to clean up my parents' mess they left behind, I will pull into rest areas and there's usually a half a dozen to a couple dozen trucks with their motors going constantly. And that is just a small comparison to what you were describing. Very yeah. small. You know, Sherry, there's actually the trucks have a motor, an idling motor. And it's actually, uh, you can see it on the side underneath where the truck driver gets out of the truck. Okay. So, and you can usually tell the difference, I think, between, uh, you know, like maybe some of the refrigeration trucks have to keep the motor, the, the tone whole motor out. I'm not sure. But it would be interesting to walk up to one and say, are you using your idling motor or not? Because most other people aren't aware of that. I, I was somewhat aware. My, my son uh, was a truck driver for quite a while. And I learned from him that they can have a generator that can keep them warm when they're pulled over without having to run the whole truck motor. So maybe that's the same thing. I will ask him because I'm sure he knows. I'm going to too because I'm I'm not sure about the sound and I'd, I'd like to be able to hear it because they used to go crazy about the same thing. But and there it's are the other pollution things to too. Crazy. There are other things to be crazy about with trucks too. And and Raquel is right. All that those fumes has got 2.5 p.m. Uh, two point. 0.5 particulate matter that bypasses the stuff that should keep it out of your lungs. No, I remember when gas prices started going up, trucks started having a um, oh, the thing on top of the cab. I'm bl blanking on, right. on the Air, word. Air, airfoils to make it yes. more efficient. And where are they? No, that they're they're on most trucks because it, it reduces the the wind and the cost of gas for them. So if it if it behooves them, some of them do. Aerodynamic, that's the word. Right. There is I, a. I see a um a, ch a chat. Uh, from Jennifer saying that they Seattle posts anti idling signs and drive throughs and um, I know there's a big project right now um, statewide on um, anti idling and school buses. But um, mm. I, I think that there's a lot of statistics, um, about, like if you idle for an hour, how much fuel you're burning. And I think that I, I where we put up a couple of billboards last year, but I think that um, that's a really good example of a collective effort if we all had you know like a jpeg that we could send out saying like this is how this is how much fuel you're burning um you know in a, in a half hour of idling or 10 minutes of idling and if you think of the whole week right like you're, you're just you're you know throwing away money but um you know so uh, it, it as much work as we do on it uh people it we just can't seem to make a dent like um We'll see, you know, neighbors just like having their like truck on for no reason, you know, things like that. And it, it feels a little intrusive to walk over and say, excuse me, but I'm breathing your air, you know, like, can you yeah. please turn it off? So, um, you know, uh, hopefully in this, this uh, in the Latino press that's coming up, we can impress upon people that, you know, you're breathing this air that you're putting out and, um, and, uh, you know, and young people, you know, they, like we mentioned earlier, they really suffer from, it's like a short attention span, they're fidgety, um, it's poisoning. It's, it's a type of poisoning that, um, you know, if you smell it, you're, you're drinking it, it's in your blood, you know, and you're digesting it. So I think, um, you know, it's a, it's a big project that we can focus on this year. Yeah. Anyone have any other questions? 
something that we were talking about before people jumped on, and I'd love to talk about it now, uh, is, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to try to find it. I'm going to ask Ed Geese, who's on, on Zoom, um, to help me do some research or find someone that can help me do some research. Um, there's some really wonderful articles, and I can send them to you, Jerry. Um, there was one about, like, for example, the history of lawns, American lawns, um, and our, oh, our, you know, our fixation with. And, and Ed is the one that, like, um, really turned me on to that. And um, because I have three lots, as I mentioned, and I'm like mowing, 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 and I'm like wasting time and wasting energy. Um, and so when I sat down to do some research um, and I looked at the history of lawns. And, um, you know, I think like, is it 3% of all air pollution in the United States comes from lawn maintenance? That's a lot, you know, because it's like collective. It might even be higher than that. I can, I can research that. Um, and when we think about capacity level, like, you know, like we can stop mowing, you know, but really we want the city to stop mowing. We want the state to stop mowing. And something that um, I've really been thinking about, and I mentioned at every meeting, I was just at the Wayne County sustainability meeting and I kept at every meeting I was like you know you can save money if we, you know we can save gas we can save money we can save emissions we can save manpower person power we could actually help our pollinators we, you know just um if we could stop mowing and I it'd be really great um to just uh work on something together if it's just messaging if everybody fans out and talks to you know candidates oh, and their commissioner right. I've been trying to tell Ferndale to do that mm -hmm. with it's, the Redians. It's no mow May. It's supposed to be no mow May, which is in a Appleton, great time Wisconsin. The yeah, fires are. I mean, the flowers are coming up, and they're just mowing over the flowers and the pollinators. And this, yes, it drives me crazy. Appleton, Wisconsin. I've just read about the the no mow May. Do you have an an, an email address that we could use, Raquel? Absolutely. And then I can, um, I'm going to put it into the chat. I have something about lawns to send you. And some people may have read it before. It, it's, it's God sends the angel Gabriel down who reports back about lawns. And it's hilarious because it is so true. You, you mean they, they, they plant all this grass and, and then they cut it? <laughs> and what about those flowers? Oh, they call them weeds. And and they they put this. Um, oh, it just goes on and on. And, and I will send it to you. Because sometimes the humor can get across to people more than anything else. There's two of my a neighbor and I will will talk to each other, look across the street, and we'll look at this woman who keeps keeps watering her lawn, and we just say. We don't water our lawns. One good rain and ours looks as good as hers. Okay, um, Raquel, back to you. We've got a few more minutes. Um, um, any additional comments or does anyone have any more questions? I'm just excited. Thank you for inviting me. And um, I, I would love to uh, just connect again and, um, you know, uh, especially around, you know, for example, one of the things that I think uh, when we get something moving in the state, we would we could bring back, you know, um, you know, just a guest speaker for five minutes before a meeting to talk about policies that um, people could um, could help. Because I think um, in Detroit, you know, um, at, at the federal level, you know, um, where you know we have a lot of uh, you know folks that we're in relationship with, like Rashida Tlaib and. Um, you know, Debbie Dingle, and then we, we already know how they feel about certain things, but in, in the outlying areas, we need help. And, uh, you know, and I think that it'd be really great to connect when there's like something statewide or something and just kind of strategize. And I, um, I know we don't tell folks how to vote, but we can talk about, you know, coming to meetings and asking questions and um, educating and folks. And I, I'm sure, I know that Sierra Club already does that, but um, I'd love to find a way to find a way to, to stay in relationships and, and work on that, you know. Um, so I, I sent my email. Um, I don't know, Jerry, if you have like a Facebook group that, you know, um, or how people are 
messaging to each other. Um, I, I feel like that there is a lot of different types of communication, so I don't know if there's a, a smaller group where... I, I don't really think we have, um, we do have a Facebook page and, you know, you can put things up like that, but I don't think we get a lot of commi uh, communication there. But um, there's a lot of things we're working on, trying to improve, so uh, I'm, I'm sure that we'll talk about that. I have um, one last question for you, and that is, is the parade always the Sunday before the 5th? Yes, always. And did you go, did you happen to see the parade? So, um, no. <laughs> I'll tell you why. Because, uh, so I didn't grow up celebrating Cinco de Mayo. I'm originally from San Antonio, Texas. So um, when you have great food and quinceañeras and parties all the time, like we have less, less like, uh, like single events like that. So, you know, there was a lot of weddings, a lot of parties. And so I don't recall ever celebrating Cinco de Mayo. And actually I forgot about it. And I was outside with my son and we were like, what is that? What is going on? And I really remembered that it was the, the you know, the party and, um, and it was uh, gridlock and um, couldn't move. And, uh, but I'm glad people come down here. They come down here and they celebrate and um, there's a lot of activities. Um, and it, it um, we did drive at one point down Werner and, it, and people were just kind of like um, when they park their cars and look at each other and they're just kind of waving at each other and it seemed really nice. And I think people are sick of COVID and wanted to get out. So it seemed really good and, and we didn't hear of any incidents once in a while there's an incident like everywhere but nothing nothing to report but the food is really great and um and uh you know we always want people to come down and visit great wonderful well i think we'll wrap it up um one comment before we say goodbye to recall is that i believe that next month we're going to have the um some students from the sunrise movement Perfect. and i've heard about it for a long time and the I've mentioned it before, uh, but I don't know much about it, and maybe you don't either. So we'll see you uh, one month from tonight, uh, maybe about sunrise. And other than that, I'll just have a hand for a job. Yeah, hello, Jerry. Kathy had a question. Okay, go ahead. Oh, I actually just had a comment. I wanted to say that my family and I, I have three small kids, we just moved to the Detroit area from Saginaw, actually. So um, this was our first Cinco de Mayo down here. And we've been to Detroit. We went to the Cinco de Mayo festival in Lincoln Park where I live. <laughs> and then the next day we went to the one in Detroit and the the feeling is just, it's beautiful. It's something that we've never experienced and it made me so happy to have my kids down here. It really was something that just, you, you wouldn't get anywhere else, I don't think. Great, wonderful. Okay, well, anything else? No, no. Last comment. You know what? So it's like $50 to walk in the parade. So how about next year Sierra Club comes down here and walks the parade? Okay. Sounds like with your t-shirts and signs, I give you fantastic. Okay. It's like a $50 application fee or something. Kathy, you good? It, it, I'm sorry? No, no, that was an accident. I don't know what's going on. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, no problem. Okay, well, listen, thank you everybody for coming. And um, I enjoyed it thoroughly, and I'm sure everybody else did recall. Thanks so much. Thank you. Okay, bye. Good evening. Bye.